What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Mullet Man episode. I am down in South Texas. As you probably saw in the last video, I'm down here with uh, my buddy Steven. He invited me down here, as well as my brother in law. Uh, we're down here doing a little deer hunting. He's, hey, uh, we're going to get in the stand. He is letting us both shoot a mature deer, so um, we're just going to wait till a mature deer walks out. Hopefully, we see a few. We're getting dressed up right now, uh, getting our stuff ready, and. Uh, Gonna head to the house real quick, say hi to everybody, and then head to the blind. See you guys when the sun starts coming up. sitting right there and uh, he was standing about right here and it looked like the arrow might have came out might have hit that back shoulder and popped out but he went crashing through these uh through these cactus so we're just gonna take our time these South Texas deer are something else I've uh me and Nathan have hunted South Texas a few times, quite a few times, and these deer are tough. And they're they're hard to find even if you make a good shot, so we're just gonna take our time through here and uh, get to tracking. Hopefully uh, put my hands on this big old buck here pretty quick. Well guys, unfortunately, we had some mic issues once again uh, using this certain camera that we were using to track this deer, but may have been a good thing because this is probably one of the most stressful times I've ever had tracking a deer. Like I said, down here in South Texas, these deer, even if you make a great shot, they can be a chore to find. And uh, this one definitely was. We tracked this deer for a uh, good 80 yards with good, pretty good blood. Uh, it was pretty spotty here and there, but we knew it was um, lung slash heart blood. So uh, it got in there and cut him up a little bit. And then we lost blood for about 45 minutes. Steven came with his dog, actually. And thankfully, we didn't have to use the dog. Uh, we had a new set of eyes with Steven, and uh, he found some new blood for us. And we didn't go another 80 yards and came out into the Sendero. And I looked to my right. Nobody else saw him. I just saw a big set of horns just 
coming out of the grass and uh i couldn't be more thankful for this deer uh super thankful to steven i'm so blessed to um have people like this in my life that let me come shoot a deer like this like i said these are a hundred percent native deer this is a true south texas giant he scored 170 on the dot um so we took a little while hung out and uh just admired this deer unfortunately nathan did not get a shot on one but uh we loaded him up took him back to the skin and shed and uh got to work and uh I'm going to show you all a little cool trick you can do with uh, with your next deer on your back strap. Okay, so I got my deer hung up and we're cleaning them up. I'm going to make something cool today. They're called back strap pops or basically a, um, it'd be like a lamb chop, but out of a back strap of a deer. So what I did, as you can see, cut the ribs down the middle on either side, cut the meat in between them. You don't have to do that. You can do that later in the process, but... I'm gonna come down here on either side of the backbone, just like you would if you're taking a back strap out. Cut that down the side of the backbone on either side. Just like that. Take your saws off. Come in here and Knock them bones off the You just want to knock those red bones off. Maybe eat it this side. Huh? like that now let's come over here and you can clean these up as much as you want you take your knife come in on the back side just like that so got your uh, back shot blade out this one doesn't have a rib obviously so we're gonna cut that got a nice piece of back strap right there Throw that in the cooler, and then what you want to do, cut them as thick as you want, but I usually just go in the middle of the rib, and uh, that way you get meat on both sides. Just like that. And you can take your knife, clean all this sinew and stuff off the bone. Take the fat off, and then you want to cut the silver skin off the back, off the back of the back strap, which is easy. You can do that in the kitchen. Clean this bone up, and uh, you can clean it up a lot better than that. Do whatever you want, but there you go. You got your deer back strap chop, and uh, they're delicious. So, see you guys in the kitchen. I'm gonna finish up the rest of these. I'll see you guys in the kitchen cook a few of these up for dinner tonight and uh we're gonna be eating good it is lunch time and we have some i guess you could call these deer tomahawks um but as you can see i cleaned the bones up as much as i could so all we're gonna do take some texana brands extra virgin olive oil we got some mashed potatoes got some broccoli going put a little olive oil in there put about a quarter stick of butter in there and uh, start letting that melt down we'll take some Ritter Glitter Red and uh, dust these tomahawks off a little bit, both sides. Salt and pepper. And flip them over and do the same thing. So you want your meat um, like 90% dry. It helps your seasonings to stick a lot better. So we'll get this, uh, get this butter melting in here. You want your pan pretty hot. You want to put enough butter in there to where you have kind of a sauce to, uh, to flip over your meat and get that seasoning all in there. We'll take our tomahawks, put them right there in the pan. 
just like that. And we'll let those start cooking up. And we're gonna do a very medium rare, more on the rare side than medium rare. Um, that's how I like my deer steaks, and this is gonna be delicious. So if y'all want a new recipe for how to cook your uh, deer backstrap, this is a good one to do. Super easy, super simple, and your family will love it. Um, like I said, we have some mashed potatoes, got some broccoli going, and deer backstrap. That's all you need, that's a full dinner. So one more thing, I got two big cloves of garlic. Throw that in there, just give it a little extra flavor, and uh, just let your meat start cooking. So if you wanna get real chef on your family, do this right here, tilt your pan, take some of that butter and oil, and just put it over that meat, it just adds that flavor to it, and it cooks it on the top side. This is looking pretty delicious. These been cooking for uh, oh, probably about four or five minutes on each side. So I'm gonna take them out and uh, put them back on the cutting board. We're just gonna let them rest for about 10 minutes. Let them finish cooking internally and then uh, while well, the broccoli's finishing up and then we'll plate it and see what it tastes like. All right guys, they've been sitting for about 10, 15 minutes. You see all that juice came off of them. Perfect little deer pop right there. Look how good that looks. Let's take it to the table and give it a rating. All right, let's cut into it and see how she looks inside. Hopefully a nice medium rare. That is exactly what you're looking for right there. More rare than it is medium rare, but uh, that's how I like my deer. So let's take it. Take a little nibble, see what this is all about. Deer doesn't get better than that. Mmm. That is some good backstrap right there. I'm gonna give that an 8.7. Out of all the deer backstrap I've ever had, that right there is amazing. The bone, I don't know if it adds flavor to it or what. It's just a good feeling whenever you, I don't know. When you can make something look that good out of a deer that you shot and it tastes that good, uh, it's a good day. So, so we're gonna enjoy our lunch and uh, Hope you guys enjoy this video. See you in the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and eat good.